Hi, I'm Jeff, and uh, today we're going to go over how to change coaxial nozzles. I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to remove and replace coaxial nozzles, the copper nozzle in a plastic nozzle, and we'll also discuss replacing the splicer pins that are used to connect the inside line of the nozzle to the inside line of the coaxial hose. And before we change the nozzles, uh, well, let's go over a few tools that I'd recommend having on hand just to make the job easier. Uh, it would be a good idea to have uh, an adjustable wrench, uh, a 7 16 wrench, a number 2 Phillips screwdriver, uh, a couple different needle nose pliers. You might want an angled needle nose or a straight one, and a, a cutters. There's a couple uh, different ways that we can remove the, uh, the nozzle from the hose. You can either uh, go at it from this end or from this end and uh, really depends on where the splicer pin winds up inside of the connection. If the splicer pin's closer to this side, it's easier to remove the nozzle. If it's closer to this side, it's easier to remove the coax hose. So. I'm going to uh, disconnect the nozzle and see where where the splicer pin is. You can see that tubing there. That's the capillary tubing that carries the fluid, and it's connected to uh, the splicer pin. And in this case, it's pretty far down in there. It can be relatively hard to get a hold of that. So I'm going to try getting it from the other side. And I can see the splicer pin right there. So it would probably be easier to work at it from this side. And uh, I'm going to push this hose back in there and, and take this fitting loose from the block. And that will give me some extra room to work with. This is a push to connect fitting and a, there's an o-ring seal around the OD of this tubing so when you turn the fitting the, the hose doesn't rotate, it just turns inside of that o-ring. So, Alright, when I pull on this you can see really well the splicer pin there. That, that end over there, that's connected to the capillary inside the nozzle and this ends to the nylon hose so I'm going to use Two, ne two needle nose to do that. This one I'll use to grip the splicer and this one I'm gonna just loosely put it around the that tubing and slide it over. I didn't squeeze it very hard there because I didn't want to mangle up these barbs on the cup on the uh, splicer. So uh, now we've got the holes loose from the nozzle and uh, I didn't really like where the uh, splicer pin was on this one. It works fine, but uh, it's just harder to install when it's uh, further back. So what I'm going to do is uh, trim this hose a little bit so that the capillary sticks out further from the end of the hose than what it does now. And I'm going to replace the splicer pin. So now it's pretty much flush which is not going to work for us. We're going to have to uh, trim the outer hose to be about an inch shorter than what the capillary is. So to do that I'm going to disconnect the outer hose at this push to connect fitting and leave that inner hose connected. So, And this was the this is the end that will go into the the fitting here but I'm going to trim about an inch off And I'll install it back on to the pump. I'll take the capillary tubing, which is still connected to the pump, thread it in. So now we're sticking out about an inch there. And I'll take this fitting and just put it back on. And I'm going to take a new splicer pin. 
and I'm gonna put it in there. To do that, I'll take a needle nose, and I like to use an angled one. I find it easier to work with. And uh, I'm gonna push this in there there. When I cut it with a diagonal cutter, I kinda got it out around so it can be a little bit hard to get that started, but I got it started and now I'm just using the workbench to push against and slide that tubing down onto it so that it covers both of the little barbs on there. That's on far enough to seal up good. Now we need to uh, take this nozzle off and we're going to replace it with a new one and I had already loosened this up so we'll just thread that out of there. Discard that one. Now I got a new nozzle here and when we send these nozzles out we send plenty of extra tubing so you can trim them to lengths. In some cases you might want to have a longer length on there so we just leave it long like that but for most cases when you get this nozzle you're going to need to trim it off some and uh, we'll trim it off about a quarter inch to a three eighths from the flare end of it there. I'm going to put this into the coupler block poke the uh, director fitting through there, or the, poke the uh, splicer through. The splicer's right there, the uh, poking out a little bit, and pull on it a little bit, so. We'll take that and uh, connect it to this. This tubing inside the nozzle is a softer material than the nylon that's in the coax hose and a lot of times you can just work it in there without using pliers on that part of the tubing. I use the pliers to hold the splicer in uh, there. Covered up both barbs. In, uh, that This way with a little extra slack in that inside line it makes it easier to work on. It'll still slide back in there fine without kinking up the hose. So you get it in like that. Get that finger tight. And then get your 7 16 wrench and uh, snug it down. And that copper flare on the end of that copper nozzle is seating and sealing up inside the coupler block. That's on there good and solid. So that's a copper nozzle right there. We'll do the plastic one next. Okay, uh, and now we'll uh, change the plastic nozzle. Very similar to the copper nozzle. Uh, really the only difference is how they connect. Uh, this has got a thread on it without a fer the ferrule or bushing so uh, when I turn this nozzle to get it loose the whole nozzle's going to turn. And you can see it's uh, connected inside to the splicer pin and uh, once again that splicer pin's pretty far down in the block and I prefer not to work with them with the that far down in there so I'm going to uh, disconnect back at the unit here and disconnect this line and then trim the outer line so we get a little more to work with. Use my number two Phillips head, my wrench, and I'll take this loose here. There's our uh, splicer pin, and uh, I'm just going to cut that off. Right about there. Disconnect back at the unit again, push on uh, the collar, pull it off. And uh, I'm going to trim about an inch off the end of here again. Reinstall. 
install the capillary and put it back on the pump. You want to use this in here. Got about an inch of it sticking out. So let's disconnect the uh, nozzle from the coupler block. And discard that. Our new nozzle. Once again, uh, we're going to trim off that line so. It's about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch long. Take our new splicer pin, install it on the nylon first. This one I cut it was a little out of round and sometimes it helps to squeeze it a little bit just to get it back to round. Take the splicer pin, get it started, and then press it against the workbench carefully, and work it on there, a little bit more, okay, covered up both those barbs. and. Uh, Put it back on the coupler block. You probably notice the uh, coupler block. It's got eighth inch NPT threads on this side and the other side's not eighth inch NPT. It's a little bigger thread. It's, it's actually a 7 16 20 straight thread. So these fittings only fit in the, the one side. The other side's a special thread for the, the nozzles. So get that together, tighten it up a little. You don't have to reef these things together because it's just compressed air inside of there and it won't hurt too much if it leaks a little bit. It won't leak that much if you tighten it down without any pipe sealing on it, but uh, you can put pipe sealing on there if you like. It's not necessary though. And let's connect this now. Yeah. Splice pin. Get in there. Okay, one unique thing about the uh, plastic nozzles is uh, they don't have the swivel on them like the copper did. So uh, when you tighten the nozzle down, um, you can actually twist up the inside capillary line. It takes about three turns to get it fully into the block and snug down. So what I like to do to avoid the twisting up that inside line is counter rotate the nozzle three turns before I get it engaged in the threads and tighten it down. So I just turn it about three times there and we'll get that started in the threads. Okay, we're in. Take my 7 16 wrench and you don't want to reef on this because those are just plastic threads and if you really tighten them hard you just strip the threads off but snug it down it'll stay fast on there. There, that one's done.